Good evening, Janesville, and welcome to the eighth annual State of the City Address. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, I wanted to uh, note a few folks that are in attendance tonight. First of all, uh, we have uh, City Council members Benson, Jackson, uh, I saw Marshick, uh, I saw Williams, uh, and I also saw Council Member Miller over in the corner. Thank you very much, Council members, for attending. And then I also saw that we have our five council candidates uh, that are here also. And so uh, council candidates, uh, where'd they go? I had uh, Burdick, Bridges, Meeklejohn, Lipinski, and Nino. And so thank you very much to the five uh, council candidates that are in attendance. And obviously council member uh, Benson and council member uh, Williams are, are running for reelection. I see a former council member out here, uh, council member Gruber, Council Member Paul Murphy, uh, Council Member uh, or Severson, thank you very much uh, to uh, folks for coming and uh, experiencing the fun with us again. I wanted to point out uh, Tosif Anam, uh, he's from Senator Johnson's office and he's been an avid supporter of our city and certainly these events over the years. I see lots of, uh, of uh, community partners in the, or uh, in the audience tonight, uh, community friends, certainly. Uh, and then uh, even some, uh, some new acquaintances tonight. And so thank you very much for joining us for this event. And I'm gonna cut to the chase. I'm gonna give you the bottom line up front. And the bottom line up front is, is that it's been a fantastic year in the city of Janesville and 2020 is gonna be an even better year. All right, so we're done. No, nope, no, nope, that's not how it's gonna work. I've got uh, a few remarks and uh, you know, our trusty communication specialist, Nick Faust, uh, he's going to uh, he's prep slides for this uh, and so i'll uh, work through the remarks and then uh, he's going to show you some slides and so i think it really gives you a nice visual of some of the success stories that the city uh, has been able to accomplish over this past uh, this past year and then things that we'll be looking at in the future but it's wonderful to be back in person for this address we've done this eight years in a row like i said but last year because of the uh, um, pandemic we went ahead and decided to tape it um, and broadcast it uh, in a taped version. And we really missed out on the ability to gather as a city team with our community to share information at uh, our open house for this past hour uh, and now to share the good news story. And so without any further ado, I'm gonna get this thing going, but thank you again for attending. Uh, as we begin this evening, I thought it might be helpful to provide a quick overview of our city organization. The city team is comprised of 565 full and part-time employees that work to provide what I describe as the full spectrum of municipal services. And so we're talking about assessment functions uh, all the way to wastewater treatment, et cetera. And if you look at this chart, uh, you know, you all start right at the beginning uh, with citizens, the city council, the city manager, and then the city organization underneath. We have uh, four uh, major departments. We certainly have the uh, administration. We partner with uh, the, the library. And all those folks in blue are the offices that support our efforts. The folks uh, in the boxes that are in kind of that uh, lighter green color, those are folks. Uh, that are uh, reside in divisions inside of those major muscle moving departments okay and so i would tell you that our organization is large and diverse um, our mission is to provide you with effective and responsive municipal services programs and infrastructure that allow you your family your neighbors and our community to continue to thrive together and prosper as, uh, as most of you know, seven city council members represent our community at large, meaning they collectively serve all of Janesville citizens. We don't have older persons that cover specific districts. All of our council members are elected at large and they cover the entire city. Um, and I think this is important to point out. These council members, they're volunteers, uh, they're unpaid. Uh, they spend an awful lot of time working hard to serve this community. And we certainly, uh, I think, sometimes take for granted the amount of meetings, work, outside reading and prep that they have to do to make decisions um, for the betterment of this community. And so, again, we say thank you to them for their service. So advising the council in these efforts are 14 standing boards, commissions and committees comprised of citizens appointed by the council president or the city manager, 
These volunteers lend their expertise to help the council determine the best path for the community as we move forward. So carrying out our mission is the job of the city's five main departments, police, fire, neighborhood and community services, public works, and the Hedberg Public Library. Several other offices, such as the assessor's office, the clerk treasurer's office, the economic development office, and others, function primarily internally in our efforts. And altogether, this team provides our citizens with the wide range of services that they see each and every day in service of this community. So guiding these efforts is our city's strategic plan. It was first adopted in 2014, and the document is updated annually with the council adopting our 2022 to 2026 plan just this past December. Rather than decisions being made on an individual or a resource focused um, objective, this plan lays out a framework of nine strategic goals that guide our city's decision making process. Each goal is of equal weight and equal importance. And I think that uh, sometimes we may lose focus of that, um, but those nine strategic goals, each one of them is equal to the other. No one stands out as more important than the other. And so I would tell you that uh, um, when the accomplishments of each goal come together, the plan helps to realize Janesville's vision of being the community of choice to realize life's opportunities. And folks, I'm here to tell you that this vision is well on its way to becoming a reality because the state of the city is not only strong, it's flourishing. To help illustrate this, I'll now take some time to highlight a few, but certainly not all the accomplishments we've made this past year in each strategic goal area. So beginning alphabetically, our plan's first goal directs us to look towards the heart of Janesville, our historic downtown. Longtime residents of our city can undoubtedly appreciate the renaissance that we've seen in this area of town and under our goal to position our downtown as a vibrant neighborhood where commerce, culture, entertainment, and history intersect. We made great strides in 2021. Continuing to make investments in our city center last year saw the successful completion of both West Milwaukee and South Main Street reconstruction projects. With the assistance of our federal and state partners, these projects brought infrastructure improvements, enhanced pedestrian and traffic safety, and a beautified street, street, excuse me, streetscape to welcome residents and visitors alike. Elsewhere, the city worked with developers to increase the number of available housing units in downtown to 682. That's a 13% increase in just over three years. Included in that figure, our Housing Services Division helped facilitate the occupancy of the River Flats Apartments, our city's first new affordable housing complex in over 20 years. And with the cooperation of our community partners, the downtown remained actively programmed in 2021 with events like the Janesville Farmers Market, seeing a record season at their new home in the town square and the Tour of America's Dairyland returning to the Town Square Grand Prix for another successful year. The city's second strategic goal leads us to ensure our local economies sustain growth and diversification. Overcoming the financial impacts of the pandemic, Janesville's local economy again maintained its momentum, building upon existing development and welcoming new additions to our community. The city issued over 4,700 permits in 2021, including 147 new housing permits for single and two family homes. That's a 27% increase in those residential permits from the year prior and the highest number of new home permits in at least a decade. Reflective of this growth last year, the 2020 US Census publication found that with a little over 65,600 residents, Janesville has welcomed over 2,000 new residents to our community in the past 10 years. So through TIF development agreements, the city's economic development office has guaranteed over $29.5 million in new value to Janesville. 
Those TIF projects come with a guaranteed increment of almost $1.6 million, and, it's, and they've created over 770,000 square feet of new or rehabilitated space. And if we look at key economic indicators for our community, we see that Janesville is truly poised for uh, continued economic momentum as we move forward this next year. According to the Wisconsin Department of Revenue, the city's equalized assessed value or our market rate value, the fair value of our community has increased 52% from 2015 to 2021. That's over a billion dollars in value growth for our community. Further, the median housing price is at an all-time high in Janesville, with rising home values even catching the attention of USA Today, who last year ranked Janesville as the sixth hottest housing market in the nation. Pretty impressive. Finally, preliminary year-end unemployment numbers in Janesville hover around 2.3%, approximately half of what it was in the city the prior year and well below the national rate. Think about that folks, in May of 2020, we were up over uh, 14, 15% and here we are 18 months later and we're back down to 2.3%, a great recovery story for our community. The next goal in our strategic plan is to remain a responsible and forward thinking steward of financial resources. And under this aim, we continue to focus on accuracy and transparency in our financial process with an eye towards long-term plans for financial sustainability. Before we get to achievements in this area, I would encourage residents to continue using our open budget and open expenditures websites. These dashboards allow the community to take a detailed and interactive look uh, at the city's financial data and with information that goes back over 10 years, these websites empower residents with tools to learn more about the city's fiscal management and review the city's financial books on demand. And if you wanna manipulate the data and do pivot tables and things like that, you can do that. I mean, it works and it's a great tool and it's there and available. It's open, it's transparent, certainly accessible. So now a significant financial milestone to highlight and that's under the leadership of our new finance director, Mr. Dave Godek. In 2022, the city's budget was submitted to the council, to the city council last fall with no draw from our fund balance. That's significant because for at least 22 years previously, we've always had to pull money from our fund balance to make the budget work. And this year we didn't have to do that. That was a huge, huge step in financial accountability because the city's budget was truly balanced, not relying on that infusion of fund balance that we've relied on for the past 22 plus years. The finance office also helped complete the city's fiscal 2020 audit, which found no significant deficiencies, misstatements or auditor entries for the fourth year in a row. And that's a big deal if you got any financial background, that, that's important. And so the city's 2021 note issue also saw historically low interest rates that were at 0.899%. What a good deal. We are, I'm not so sure we're gonna see those anytime soon. But that allowed the city to capitalize on those economic conditions and save on interest costs for years to come. Good news story for our community, for our taxpayers. And while the city primarily relies on property tax and state shared revenue to fund its operations, staff again diligently worked last year to secure grants and donations to help complete projects, fund programs, and replace equipment. In fact, in 2021, the city received over $30.4 million in grants and donations. I, don't, I think most people don't, don't appreciate that. They don't understand that. $30.4 million in grants and donations coming in to support our efforts. And this includes certainly the $11.6 million that we received in ARPA funding, which is the American Rescue Plan Act. And so after it was announced last year, the city would receive those ARPA funds, 
staff created a screening and evaluation criteria to guide the city's use of those funds to make sure that we were achieving strategic goals for our community and for our city. And after a thorough review and discussion, nine projects were ultimately received council approval, including $4.3 million for water main replacement projects and $2.3 million to perform lead water service line replacements. These recovery funds will mean that the city will not need to borrow $7.68 million in future years, which will save taxpayers uh, $380,000 in uh, interest. And so again, a good news story, and we appreciate the assistance um, from our, uh, our federal brothers and sisters. It also provided the city with $2 million for the design of the Woodman's Community Center project and $2 million for our new Pay It Forward grant program, which will help area nonprofits uh, with impactful community initiatives. So now our next goal is to strategically communicate the city's strengths, priorities, and initiatives while maintaining trust and confidence through effective engagement. And the city made great strides in those efforts this past year. Staff relaunched many city communication initiatives like the community advocate updates and the city's award-winning cable TV program, Park Place Views, with shows airing monthly on JETV, cable channel 994, Park Place Views is also available on YouTube and the city's website. Staff also launched new communications projects, such as the creation of the city's Instagram account and a new podcast called Park Place Podcast, which aims to reach a diverse audience of community members. The city also completed a community-wide resident satisfaction survey, and those results of that effort were shared with the council earlier this week to perform or correction to better inform city decision makers as to the priorities of our community. And the city again increased online engagement through its social media channels and quadrupled video coverage of our government meetings, ensuring that all members of our community have access to watch live or to watch in a taped version those public meetings. And our next goal is to build upon the community's foundation of a well-planned, maintained, dependable, and sustainable infrastructure. The city realized many significant infrastructure milestones this year, and I'm going to highlight just a few. With the Vista Park playground renovation, the Parks Division marked the completion of the city's playground replacement plan, which was first adopted in the 1990s. With modern amenities, increased accessibility, and removal of all of the wooden play structures, this accomplishment ensures that Janesville is living up to our moniker as Wisconsin's Park Place. The city's IT office completed several technology upgrades in 2021, including extending the fiber optic network to multiple city facilities and then south all the way to shine technologies on the south side of town. Our recreation division completed their aquatics facility technical evaluation, which provides the city with a roadmap and a plan for infrastructure repairs and renovations to a few of our great community assets, namely the Palmer Park wading pool and our Rockport pool. Elsewhere, the city's water utility finished the installation of automated meter reading infrastructure, also called here in City Hall, AMI. Um, and sometimes that was a bad word in City Hall. This new technology will capture water meter, water meter readings on an hourly basis, allowing the utility to quickly inform customers of costly high water usage events, such as broken and running plumbing fixtures. Our operations division opened cell number six on the, at the sanitary landfill, while also installing new gas collection system in cell number four. And both projects will extend the longevity of that critical piece of city infrastructure. And also the city's engineering division coordinated, as we do and have done since 2016, 
the annual utility and street programs, delivering 12 miles of rehabilitated streets and completing 16 public works projects with the completion of projects like the front entrance of our City Hall Plaza. And given the importance of partnerships in every facet of our community, our next goal calls on the city to embrace and enhance collaboration with local, regional, national, and global stakeholders. As our community continues to respond and recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, last year, the city made great efforts to cooperate with our community partners to magnify our impact. The Janesville Fire Department partnered with the Rock County Public Health Department to form a joint mobile vaccine clinic providing COVID-19 vaccines and, bo and boosters to homebound individuals in our community. The department also partnered with the City of Madison and the Beloit Fire Departments to conduct for the first time joint special teams training, which maximizes the department's resources and fosters collaboration that transfers to real life incidents. Our Janesville Police Department worked with the Blackhawk Technical College to sponsor the Ideal Opportunity Scholarship, which allows a minority student to attend college while working part-time with the JPD as a community service officer. And at the Hedberg Public Library, they worked cooperatively with community partners to extend additional educational and training programs, including the Small Business Startup Series. That initiative brought experienced entrepreneurs and professionals to share experience and skills with local business owners. Altogether, these collaborative programs were recognized by Forward Janesville when they named the Hedberg Public Library as their 2021 Educator of the Year. Now, the accomplishments we have covered so far and all those yet to come begin and end with the work of our city team. Our organizational goal of performance culture works to cultivate an environment that empowers our team of engaged, innovative, and diverse employees. And I want to point out that in 2021, the city hired or promoted 82 full-time and part-time employees. Remember, our, our population, our, the number of employees is 565. Um, so that's well above 10%, probably pushing, I guess, about 15%. A lot of turnover. The city also hired an additional 36 seasonal workers. And frankly, we can't do the work during the winter season or the summer season without the addition of those seasonal workers. And I think that for a, from a, a manager's perspective, although we're official at 565, when you add those seasonal workers, any given time, we're running about 600 folks on staff. And so as we approach another busy season of hiring, I would encourage everyone to visit the city's website to explore current job opportunities with us. And so, you know, we've got opportunities, just uh, come give us a visit and we'll find something uh, that will be just right for you. Elsewhere, our performance culture was also recently recognized by Forward Janesville when they named the city as a co-recipient of the 2021 Community Improvement Award. The distinction recognized the efforts of city staff and partner agencies during the I-3990 project uh, out on the interstate, and it noted the team's work to stage and execute the construction work with minimal impacts to the public and to the business community. Our Janesville Fire Department also earned recognition in 2021 when they were named statewide pediatric champions of the year by the Wisconsin EMS for Children program. JFD staff earned this accolade for their skillful assessment, treatment, and transport of a toddler who was the victim of a car accident. And while those are simply a few examples of members of the city team demonstrating exemplary service, I could find countless more success stories of our employees embodying our organizational values and working towards the success of our community. Looking to another strategic goal of the city, our strategic plan tasks us to promote, enhance, and respect the unifying feature of our community, the mighty Rock River. Mindful of protecting this resource, last year the wastewater utility installed new infrastructure to monitor and treat phosphorus inflow to the wa uh, wastewater treatment plant. 
This new technology will reduce the discharge of phosphorus into the Rock River. The utility also coordinated with Rock County to develop plans for local farmers to instill practices that reduce the stormwater runoff that, deposit, that deposits phosphorus into our Rock River watershed, which identifies a collaborative community solution to enhance the health of our river. And our final strategic goal is to build a safe and healthy community. The city continues to advance the safety and overall well-being of our residents and neighborhoods through cooperation and encouraging active lifestyles. Understanding the importance of a robust and diverse city team, the Janesville Police Department hired 20 officers over the past year, returning to full staffing levels that would allow the JPD to build upon our community's 35-year crime rate low, again, low in our community. A great effort by Chief Moore and his team. Um, great success story for our community because we all want to live in a safe community. And uh, in 2021, uh, I think that's exceptional because in 2021, uh, the JPD responded to over what they call police activities, 60,000 police activities, all right? 60,000, that's a lot every single day. And so Chief, nicely done. So likewise, uh, our Janesville Fire Department also made huge strides in 2021. They received a new fire engine for fire station number three, and they added a fifth paramedic ambulance as, uh, as of the new year. The addition of the paramedic ambulance marks a major milestone for the department as it now staffs an engine and an ambulance at every one of our fire stations. And that's been a shortfall for quite some time. It was the first thing that the fire union hit me up with when I arrived was, you know, we really want to get that fifth fire or that fifth ambulance uh, on the West uh, Station, and we finally made it. And so kudos to Chief Pankowskis and his team for all the hard work in bringing that to reality. So this addition of an ambulance in the, uh, at the fire station will expand JFD, JFD's firefighting capabilities, enhance emergency medical services, and promote the safety of residents, residents and personnel operating at emergency scenes. Our recreation division was excited to bring many events back to person, into person this year, welcoming 163,000 participants to programs like Janesville's Jolly Jingle, The Enchanted Forest, and Music at the Marv. And Janesville mobilizing for change, the division creating a healthier community for our youth, resumed in-person activities, with a successful slate of prevention in the park, events and programmed virtual in-school events like the Reality Maze, which teaches Janesville youth about real life consequences of substance use. And our city's housing services division provided 500 families with housing through the rent assistance program in 2021. They also further magnified their impact by partnering with area service agencies to provide 297 households with federal emergency rental assistance or motel vouchers. With all those accomplishments, the city certainly made great strides in 2021. However, looking forward and towards 2022, we certainly have a lot more to accomplish in the year ahead. Now, given the vast number of projects and initiatives planned for this year, I certainly won't be able to highlight each and every one of them, but I would like to focus on a couple of the top priorities from each of our strategic goal areas. Beginning with our downtown again, staff will continue to work with our partners like Downtown Janesville and the Janesville Area Convention and Visitors Bureau as we look to continue to expand the downtown's busy slate of activities and events. Janesville Transit System and our Engineering Division will oversee the $1.5 million rehabilitation of our downtown bus transfer center. This project was secured through federal funding. The work will improve the center's accessibility, replace and refurbish facility components and public spaces, and revitalize this critical transit facility to ensure our community can access our wonderful downtown. And if you didn't get a chance to see the mock-ups next door in the break room, I encourage you to take a peek. The drawings are fantastic. It will be a wonderful addition to our community. 
Finally, our Economic Development Office will undertake a marketing and attraction plan that explores the development of a destination use for our downtown, such as a museum or some kind of additional performance venue. In our economy goal area, the city will continue to assist with the sale and redevelopment of the Centennial Industrial Park with staff pr pursuing additional funding through the Environmental Protection Agency and the WEDC to address the remediation needs that are at that site. Certainly a byproduct of our successes, economic development staff will also purchase additional land for industrial development and evaluate options to grow existing industrial parks as the city looks to maintain our economic momentum. I mean, if you remember, uh, you know, several weeks ago, the council approved the city per, uh, uh, negotiating an option to purchase land on the south side of the Dollar General complex. And so um, if we're gonna develop and grow, it will likely be in that direction from a industrial park perspective. So now as the city looks to remain a responsible steward of its financial resources, uh, the Janesville Fire Department and our finance office uh, staff will be busy in 2022 working to implement adjustments in our township fire and EMS service fee structure. When implemented, these changes will more equitably reflect the cost of these services. The city's economic development office again will follow through with multiple pending grant applications, which if awarded in full, could provide the city with over $10 million in various city uh, project funding, including a south side grocery store and new equipment for our Janesville Fire Department. In 2022, we will continue proactive communications that seek to engage the community and maintain the trust and confidence of our stakeholders. City staff will explore new opportunities to work with our partners in education to reach students through presentations and hands-on exercises that provide our young learners the opportunity to better understand local government. City departments like the Janesville Police Department and the Hedberg Public Library will continue to engage the community through events like our small neighborhood group outings and certainly uh, the infamous bookmobile as it travels the streets of our fine community. And through events like community engagement forums, the city will actively seek input from our residents on major projects like street reconstruction and certainly the Woodman's Community Center. This upcoming year related to our infrastructure strategic goal the Public Works Department will continue with several large infrastructure projects, including the rehabilitation of 12 miles of city streets, which includes the reconstruction of Blackbridge Road from Mayfair to Milton Avenue, and assisting in the reconstruction of US Highway 14 from Milton Avenue uh, eastward towards Deerfield Drive. The Utility Division will remove an additional 300 public lead laterals and replace them with new copper service lines that ensure the long-term health of the community. And I'm very, very pleased to uh, report that in 2021, November, uh, our water utility was able to, you know, say thumbs up that we were able to replace all of the private lead laterals that exist throughout the city, the tune of, you know, well over 600. Uh, and uh, they did that in November. And that was uh, thank, uh, thankfully to uh, grant dollars that the city received from the DNR. And so um, a positive step, an achievement on the private side, now we got to work on the public side. The city will also oversee the design of the Woodman's Community Center, which is Janesville's proposed indoor athletic and conference center. We're excited to have recently selected a firm to do the design work on the project. And this center continues to represent an exciting investment with the potential to put our community on the map as a destination community for sporting events, conventions, conferences, training opportunities, you name it, generating economic impact from non-local visitors. And I think the, the study that we did uh, several years ago uh, estimated $10 million in economic impact annually. And I imagine with inflation, that's probably gone a little bit higher. So um, that's significant for our community. Mindful of the need for continued collaboration, City staff will keep with our spirit of partnership through projects like the Housing Services Division's Home Rehabilitation Program that we do with the Wisconsin Partnership for Housing Development, which has so far constructed or rehabilitated 
24 affordable houses in our community, resulting in over $1.9 million in additional tax valuation for our community. The Public Works Department will work with Rock County to update Janesville's 208 Water Quality Management Plan, a plan that works regionally to minimize ground and surface pollution in our community through an effective and economical use of wastewater treatment solutions and options. And then looking to maintain our performance culture and to ensure the city maintains its exceptional workforce, the Human Resources Office will conduct a salary and benefit survey uh, this year for our administrative employees. For those that might not be aware, we have three unions that we work with. Those are uh, uh, based on contracts and the balance of our city employees are considered in administrative employees. And so it's time to, to review salary and benefits for those administrative employees. Adjusting to the realities of the modern work environment, the IT and assessor's office will implement telework recommendations to maintain an efficient and effective workplace for city staff. The police and public works departments will undertake efforts to achieve uh, reaccreditation. Uh, both of those departments are accredited currently uh, and they'll have to start that reaccreditation process. And this work allows us to review and display our organizational practices and reaffirm our commitment to professional excellence in those departments. Continuing efforts to promote the unifying feature of our community, the city will continue to actively pursue property acquisitions that ensure public accessibility to the Rock River. The city will also work with partners like our Rock Aquajays to promote the river as a regional recreation attraction and an asset for capturing non-local visitor spending. Our city's housing services and parks division will complete major renovations to Fourth Ward Park, adding a new playground structure, a new pavilion and basketball shooting court to our city's first park. And if you didn't get a chance to see the diagrams next door, I encourage you to check that out. Um, pretty uh, impressive and very, very excited that uh, we're able to bring that to the fourth ward. Our housing services team will also kick off a new home ownership opportunity program called A Place of My Own, which will help rent assistance participants achieve their goal of home ownership. JPD will host problem-oriented police policing training for its officers, utilizing grant funding to better equip its staff and with the skills that are needed to protect our community. And the Janesville Fire Department will hire a new deputy chief and six new firefighter paramedics to maintain the staff needed to provide excellent fire and emergency medical services for the community. So we're almost at the end here, folks, and so bear with me for a few more minutes. So all of the city's past achievements and those future initiatives are set amidst the backdrop of ongoing challenges that we must confront over the coming year and beyond. And I think that's true for any organization, just certainly a reality in today's world. So with the rise of the Omicron variant, our community must continue to combat COVID-19 pandemic. As we work to protect ourselves, our families, our neighbors, and our coworkers, the city must continuous, continue to proactively work with our partners in public health and our community to keep Janesville safe, no doubt. The city also faces a variety of financial challenges as we strive to provide essential municipal services such as public safety, utility systems, and transportation. Legislatively, strict state levy limits guarantee that the city continues to lose financial ground to inflation. And you can see that on the chart in the upper right of the slide with the blue line being inflation and the net new construction line, the amount that we can raise our levy on the red line. And you know, in a perfect world, that net new construction line would be equal to the blue line or above the blue line. Historically, it continues to uh, be below the line. And frankly, with 7% uh, inflation in 2021, Frankly, the CPI line's running out of control. We'll never catch up, um, and so we need some change. But I would tell you uh, that uh, those strict state levy limits guarantee that the city continues to lose financial ground to inflation, meaning that with every year, we increasingly lose the ability to generate the revenue needed to meet rising service costs. That's a problem. We've got to figure that one out. 
These ramifications are especially punishing for financially prudent municipalities like Janesville, where the pop property tax rate per capita is the fourth lowest among our 14 peer communities. The state also continues to unevenly distribute shared revenue, with Janesville receiving the lowest combined property tax and shared revenue per capita of all 15 peer communities. So we compare ourselves against 14 other communities, a group of 15, no Madison, no Milwaukee, but the other larger communities in Wisconsin. And when you look at shared revenue and property tax per capita coming into the city of Janesville, we are the absolute bottom of the pile. And it's been that way for years. And trust me, I've spent eight years trying to get somebody to listen uh, up in Madison, and it's just not getting there. And so uh, you'll hear later on that we certainly would appreciate uh, the community stepping up and saying, enough's enough, we need change. And so while the state has failed to address this iniquity, the special ERP payment that they allocated to Janesville as an acknowledgement in 2018 of an equitable shared revenue distribution is set to expire at the end of the year. That was an additional $383,000 between 2018 and 2022. Uh, and so this is the last year that we get it. They didn't put it into the budget uh, moving forward into 23 and beyond. And so, you know, the, the things that we brought on board with those, uh, you know, $583,000 are going to have to go away unless something changes. And so um, I would tell you that in the absence of state action to extend this special payment or a fair recalculation of shared revenue distribution, the city will be forced to cut positions of three police officers and three firefighters in 2023. That was the deal going in, and that's where we're at right now. And so unless the state changes uh, and it either extends that $583,000 special ERP payment in recognition of uh, an uh, unfair or inequitable distribution of shared revenue, um, we're going to lose uh, police officers and firefighters, and no one wants to do that. That's just not the right thing to do. Um, but that's our reality, and the only folks that have the ability to change that are up in Madison. All right, so organizationally, our, uh, our city staff, our city team, uh, we certainly continue to age. I think I feel like I've been here 15 years and it's only been eight. So um, it's been tough. Uh, our average age of our city employees is 43. And this you know, kind of demographic shift as we you know, uh, age in our city, uh, you know, we lose organizational knowledge, we lose experience, we lose expertise. 2021 was one of those years uh, where we had a significant number of retirees or retirements. Um, 2022 is going to be very, very similarly uh, similar. And so I think that uh, we just need to recognize that, uh, you know, our workforce is getting a little bit older. And frankly, folks are, are leaving as, as uh, they become retirement eligible. And uh, that's, you know, that certainly is a challenge for any organization, but the city, given the age, average age of our employee group, that's a challenge. Socially, the city must face the challenging perceptions of local government and distrust in government as a whole. We must continue to build relationships and de demonstrate our commitment to transparency and community involvement. Further, community-wide, Janesville must work to become a community that embraces diversity and respects the value of change. And environmentally, as Wisconsin's Park Place, the city will face challenges in protecting our community's natural resources. Remediating brownfield sites across our community and stewarding the health of the Rock River will be necessary to maintain Janesville's natural environment for future generations. And so now you ask, how can I help? And I would tell you that, uh, you know, uh, you can help, you can make a difference. This community can make a difference. We know that citizen engagement is critical to achieving success for community outcomes, and we welcome your input. And it all begins with communication. Please give the city feedback. We want to hear from you. Engage us in person. Call us on the phone. Visit our website. Engage with us on social media. You can also help us lobby our state and federal legislators, the issue I talked about before. Using your voice to advocate for our community is critical as our elected representatives consider issues like levy limits and shared revenue. Writing or calling your legislators helps make them aware 
that their constituents uh, are concerned by these issues and that they are advocating for change. The city encourages you to attend our events and our meetings. We certainly appreciate a nice group of folks uh, attending tonight. Uh, and I would tell you that uh, your presence at events like tonight's event and other public meetings, it certainly provides a vital avenue uh, for your participation, but more importantly, for our understanding so that we know what the issues are of this community and for this community. We also welcome you to volunteer. The city has hundreds of volunteers serving on committees, boards, commissions, working elections, and making all the many programs and events possible. Folks, we just couldn't do it without volunteers. Just no way. We've got over 600 volunteers across our community that help us do what we do. Um, and so without volunteers, uh, service levels, the impact, the quality of service, they're just not where they need to be. And so we encourage folks uh, to volunteer and see impact in your community. Finally, you can always stay connected to the city by liking us on Facebook, following us in on Twitter, um, follow us, following us on Instagram, receiving emergency updates from the JPD via Nixle, connecting with us on LinkedIn, and certainly receiving city news through your email. Um, in closing, I'd like to you know, certainly thank all of the staff members uh, responsible for tonight's event. Folks, this doesn't just happen. Um, there's a lot of work that's been done. Um, I wanna say thank you to all of our departments for the great displays and the tables and the information and the tchotchke that's out there. And uh, um, it was just great seeing people interacting with our departments. And so thanks to the departments for putting those together. Um, I also wanna say uh, you know, thanks to uh, um, my office. Uh, so Carrie and Aaron uh, you know, really kind of helped put the finishing touches on things tonight and get us set up. Um, and uh, for this great event. And then I need to say thanks to Nick Faust. Nick, come on up here. I got a, I got a little coin to present and say thank you for your work. Um, so we'll do that. That's non-COVID friendly, yeah. but you get it, right? All right. And so I'll find some uh, stuff for you. And folks, what you need to know about Nick is, is he's a new city employee. He got here last January, right? Yeah, first week of January. Um, this is his second state of the city. So when he got here last year, you know, the first thing that we gave him was the state of the city file and said, go forth and do good things. And he did great things. We just didn't have the open house that we had to do tonight. And so this added a whole new part or problem set that he had to coordinate. And so Nick, you're doing great work. If anybody pays attention to our social media channels, I mean, we're just knocking the knocking a grand slam every day with that social media engagement. Um, if you look at our press releases and our graphics and the things that um, we've got going on in our community, Nick's making it happen. And so kudos and superb job. Keep doing it. Okay. And thank you. Um, I also want to say thanks to a great JATV team, uh, Alan Luckett and Tina Breeze Wallers. Thank you very much um, for all the work that you do uh, supporting our public meetings and certainly our events. Um, you guys are superstars. You know that. Uh, and I just want to say thank you publicly for all that you do. All right. Um, and then uh, I want to say to the group, thank you for attending tonight. It's wonderful to see a nice, uh, especially with Omicron uh, going on, with people that uh, are willing to come out, engage, learn, um, and, uh, and talk to the city, and then hear what the city has to say. And so thank you to all of you for helping make Janesville the community of choice to realize life's opportunities. And then uh, lastly, um, but certainly not least, I, I do want to thank our City of Janesville team. Um, you know, folks, uh, we got a great, uh, great city of Janesville team. They're professional, they're courteous, they're respectful, they're adaptable, they communicate well. Um, they certainly are public servants and they recognize the role of being a public servant and that that's important and not everybody out there wants to do that. And so um, to the city of Janesville team that's here and to those that might be listening in the future, you know, thanks for coming to work each and every day. Thanks for serving your community. Um, and thanks for going that extra mile uh, that you do. And so uh, last slide, I just want to say, remember to stand tall, stand firm, stand together because we are Janesville strong. Thank you for attending. God bless and good night. Hi, 
I'm Nick Faust, and I'm the communication specialist in the city manager's office. 2021 was certainly a very busy and exciting year in the city of Janesville. Staff from our information technology office helped extend our fiber optic network to multiple city facilities and completed the grant funded fiber installation that extended our network south to Shine Technologies. City staff also finished the replacement of our credit card system with the new e-commerce system going live this February, allowing customers and staff a more efficient and effective payment process. JTV Media Services quadrupled their coverage of our governmental meetings, ensuring our community has critical access to public meetings. The Human Resources Office hired and promoted 82 employees with an additional 36 seasonal workers. The Clerk Treasurer's Office helped facilitate over 10,000 ballots cast in our elections without a single case of COVID-19 directly linked to our elections. The Economic Development Team led the charge in securing six TIF development agreements, guaranteeing a new total value of over $29 million to the city. EDO staff also authored and supported changes to our city's liquor regulations, which will help facilitate the introduction of the High V Grocery Store, representing a $20 million investment in our community. Along with other city staff, the EDO team also assisted in seven pending grant applications, which if awarded would, allow, would result in over $10 million in funds for various city projects, including a potential grocery store on the south side and equipment replacements for the JFD. And of course, our assessor's office, finance office, and attorney's office are always busy behind the scenes. We're looking forward to another busy and exciting year, and we thank the residents of Janesville for allowing us to serve you. So I'm Jennifer Petrozella, the city's neighborhood and community services director and the individual fortunate to work with the city's housing, recreation and transit divisions. The city's annual State of the City event provides a wonderful opportunity to reflect back on some of the year's accomplishments and look towards the exciting opportunities before us. So starting out with our housing division, um, last year NCS Housing was able to facilitate the occupancy of the city's first affordable housing construction project in over 20 years. Now offers 92 safe affordable rental housing units. The division partnered with area service agencies to provide 297 households and families with emergency rental assistance or motel vouchers using federal housing and COVID relief funds. We also joined with the Wisconsin Partnership for Housing Development to construct two new single family homes for low to moderate income families as part of our neighborhood reinvesting in the fourth ward. And lastly, the city division worked with the parks division to begin a large improvement effort of the fourth ward neighborhood park. A born learning trail was installed, new basketball court base was poured, and additional amenities were planned and purchased. This project will continue into 2022, where new playground equipment, a pavilion, and basketball court will be installed this spring. Efforts to promote home ownership and a tight housing market will also continue through continued collaboration with Wisconsin Partnership for Housing Development to create affordable housing, increased assistance with down payment and closing costs for low and moderate income home buyers through the city's Home Possible program, and implementation of a new program entitled place on my own that would allow eligible participants in the city's rent assistance program to purchase a home while redirecting rent assistance payments to mortgage payments. One item to highlight in the city's recreation division is the culmination of several years of research by the city, JCVB, and community members into the feasibility and desirability of constructing an indoor sports and conference center. In October, the City Council authorized design on what is now being referred to as the Woodman's Community Center, Janesville's athletic and indoor conference facility, after Woodman's Food Market generous donation. The project has garnered significant support from other donors, including Mercy Health and the Kennedy Family Foundation, and Rockstep, who has offered to donate the site at Uptown Janesville. The center will include one main ice sheet, one secondary ice sheet with removable ice, and 20,000 square feet of flexible space. It's estimated that this project will generate new economic input of at least 10 million to the community and 4 million increase in personal earnings annually by year five. We'll do this by attracting tournaments, competitions, and conventions with non-local participants and attendees while serving as a valuable public resource for Janesville residents by accommodating local sports, recreation and entertainment events and activities. 
fundraising and design will be ongoing through 2022. Other highlights for 21 included the creation of the Parks and Recreation Legacy Fund and the completion of an aquatics technical facility evaluation, which gave us a roadmap to plan for much needed improvements and repairs to Palmer Wading Pool and the Rockport Aquatic Complex. In 2022, the Recreation Division will be also be undertaking the design of improvements to the Palmer Wading Pool and development of a recreation master plan. Last but not least, uh, the Janesville Transit System has made significant investment in onboard security and safety through the installation of permanent driver barriers and air surface sanitation purification systems. They have improved passenger access particularly at the new Rock County Resource Center and along Milton Avenue at Kettering Street. In addition, JTS designed the rehabilitation of the Transfer Center in downtown Janesville. The council recently awarded the construction bid for the project, which will begin this spring. The current facility is over 20 years old and in need of upkeep and improvement. The project will include the replacement of HVAC systems, plumbing repairs, a new roof, improved ventilation, a new dispatcher workspace, and improved heating and cooling in the public lobby. Concrete work will also lead to improved ADA accessibility and safety, and all restrooms will be converted to single stalls, and three family restrooms will be added. That project will be primarily funded by transit-specific COVID relief funding and will wrap up late in the year. JTS will also be taking delivery of two new clean diesel buses, which will conclude a three-year transition and upgrade of the city's bus fleet, resulting in vehicles with much improved fuel efficiency and lower emissions. Finally, JTS will be undertaking a five-year transit development planning process to evaluate the performance of existing transit service, develop strategies to improve transit system connections, and consider how best to meet future mobility needs. So in sum, we're looking forward to another great year at the NCS uh, department with the city of Janesville. Thank you. Hello, Brian McCormick here, the library director at Hedberg Public Library. And you know, we've had, had a really, I guess as good as it could be 2021, considering you know we're still working with the pandemic and everything, but um, Forward Janesville recognizing us as Educator of the Year, big surprise, but really welcome. It's great for the community to recognize uh, the value that we have here in the community. We really appreciate that. And then a uh, big shout out to Dollar General and the employees there because uh, of several organizations in the city uh, the employees there voted to give $10,000 to the library because of the work that we do. So uh, big thanks to them and again for recognizing all that we do here in the city of Janesville and really appreciate you know, everybody uh, you know, sticking up for us and coming and visiting the library and using our resources and services and talking about us. So um, really pleased for all that. As you can see from our board here, still uh, lots of activities. Uh, even though you know everyone's kind of hunkered down and learning to live in a different way with the pandemic and all that, we're still out there providing services and programs and and resources for the community. So do it a little bit differently, but we're still out there and we're still doing that. So um, a lot of good things going on. We have our bookmobile. We got programs out in the park, uh, things at the library. Just a lot of smiling faces there. So it's good to see that. We did update our mission, vision, and values, talking a lot about more uh, the community engagement that we do. I won't bore you by reading that because I'm sure JATV will do a little you know, close-up of that. But uh, we did update that. Um, speaking of the library, it's not just the library. We have two divisions. We have JM4C that uh, does a lot here in the community. Uh, when we came up with the name, so I'm thinking way back almost 10 years ago, Janesville Mobilizing for Change, it was about uh, alcohol awareness for youth and uh, opioid at that time, but uh, heroin and mental health, a lot of things that the uh, Janesville Mobilizing for Change has gotten involved in. 
We chose that name because we knew the community was going to change. And so instead of just focusing on alcohol at that time, it's like, well, there's going to be other things coming up. So we chose the name James Will Mobilizing for Change. And, you know, almost like Nostradamus, we're predicting the, predicting the future. There are a lot of different things going on here. But they do great work. Um, they do have a website. You can take a look at that. They do have monthly meetings. Uh, but they are based at the library. So if you did want to get in touch with them, you could always stop in at the library and uh, ask to see somebody there, and we'll get you in touch with them. Jane Goldberg and Zandy Finn run Jane's Little Mobilizing for Change. And then, of course, JATV, you are probably watching them right now as you're doing the state of the city. Uh, they are also a division of the library. They you know, do all the city council meetings, many of the committee meetings, uh, many church services, community groups, um, programs, activities. They filmed the Nutcracker this past holiday season. Uh, another first-rate organization, award-winning, I should say. They have many awards down there in the, uh, in the uh, studio. Uh, Tina and Alan do most of the work there at, at JTV with Bouillard doing some video as well. So another great asset here in the community. So all this is you know, part of Hedberg Public Library. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by. But uh, we're here to serve you and really enjoy uh, working with the public. The Janesville Fire Department seen another busy year in 2021. The department responded to 10,841 calls for service. This is an increase of 638 calls over 2020. There were 17,723 unit responses, which included 7,689 requests for an ambulance. The department ca cared for 7,490 patients in 2021. The department took delivery of a 2021 Seagrave engine that replaced a 2012 Pierce, which was moved into reserve status. The new engine will be housed at Station 3 on the west side. In 2021, the department seen the appointment of a new fire chief and deputy fire chief. With the upcoming retirement of Deputy Chief Bill Rutke, the department will have an all new administrative staff. Moving into 2022, the department was excited to add the fifth staff staffed ambulance at fire station number three on the west side. This increases the de department's daily staffing level of two personnel. The addition of the fifth ambulance will help reduce the response times for EMS requests on the west side of the community and the towns we serve. The department was approved to purchase a new ambulance in 2022. This unit will be an additional unit added to our fleet. With the unit, the department will be allowed to staff five frontline ambulances and have two ambulances in reserve to handle an increase in call volume and or while maintenance is being performed on other units. With that, the Janesville Fire Department would like to thank the City Council, City Manager Freitag, and the community for their continued support. Well, 2022 is going to be an important year for us. We have recently hired 20 new police officers that are going through training. That's almost one third of our patrol officers. We've got 64 patrol officers out in the field and 20 of them are in training. So this is a, a big challenge for us to get all of these officers trained up and get them out in the field. And our biggest concern are the mis mission values and beliefs of the police department, in addition to all the training that we need to do. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We feel confident that we've hired some very good individuals and they're gonna serve the department for many years to come. But nonetheless, we have a lot of work here in 2022. Also in about June, uh, we're bringing a nationally noted uh, professional into Janesville to talk to us about problem-oriented policing. Now we've done this about a decade ago, but we've had such a turnover in our staff that we want to um, bring the individual in. He's a professor with Arizona um, State University and um, really walk us through the whole problem-oriented policing, which is a bedrock of what we do here in Janesville. We ask that our officers not only go out and address crime, but do it from a problem-oriented perspective so we don't have to go back to those same crimes over and over again. Also in 2022, we're hopeful that COVID um, is not a factor 
and we're hopeful that we can get into our neighborhoods this um, summer and engage with our neighbors like we have um, in previous years and build that trust and build that relationships, which we know helps to prevent crime. And then lastly, uh, 2022 is going to be an important year for us for reaccreditation. Um, we are up for reaccreditation in 2023. We have a lot of work that we have to do in 2022 to make sure that in early 23 that we'll be ready to pass that accreditation standards. You know, it's interesting, I hear police departments always say that they are a professional department. And I often ask, says who? And our says who is our accreditation. We have outside accreditors uh, come into the department, make sure that all of our policy and procedure is right. But not only that, we have to show proof that we're walking the talk and doing the things that professional organizations do with respect to policy and procedure. So have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, we look for 2022 to be a great year and we're really hopeful that it is without COVID. Hi, I'm Paul Woodard. I'm the Director of Public Works for the City of Janesville. I'm pleased to be here tonight representing the City of Janesville Public Works Department. It is the only department in the state and one of over 150 that are in North America that are accredited by the American Public Works Association. 2021 was another great year for Public Works. Public Works has six divisions. There's not enough time to list all the projects here, but here are some highlights from these six divisions. Our engineering division completed the reconstruction of West Milwaukee Street from River Street to Five Points. We did another 12 miles of our street program. We completed the front deck of the City Hall after a few years, and it looks, out, looks beautiful now. And we installed a new traffic signal that was seen in Randall Street using federal highway safety improvement funding. The building division issued 146 new home permits. That includes nine duplexes. Also six multifamily permits were issued for 244 dwelling units. And then there, there were an additional 4,558 permits for other work. Our parks division repaved the roads in Riverside Park, renovated Vista Park playground, installed a new playground in the youth sports complex, and they completed the installation of a Patrick W. Ryan Pavilion at the Palmer Tennis Courts. Our utility division completed the installation of automated meter reading infrastructure, and they've also coordinated the removal of all private lead service laterals in the city, so no homes in the city are, are using currently private lead service laterals. Our utility division also installed infrastructure at the treatment plant to monitor and treat the inflow of phosphorus. Our operations division completed construction of our salt brine building, and that allows us to make our own salt brine that we use in our winter pre-treatment operations for ice, snow and ice events. We also complete the landfill solar feasibility analysis, and we also opened and began accepting solid waste at cell number six in the landfill. Our planning division completed the Janesville area 2020-2050 long range plan, and we also began the update of the comprehensive plan. 2022 will be another busy year. We'll continue doing 12 miles of road work and we'll continue work on our comp plan update. We are overseeing the design of the Woodman Community Center, overseeing the rehabilitation of the Transit Transfer Center and replacing over 300 public lead laterals. Our goal is to remove all the public lead laterals by the year 2025. We encourage residents to watch the city website for information and call us with any information regarding public works. Thank you.